Year is a poem by Sylvia Plath written in the 60s. And if we break up the contraction, the title of the poem is You Are. So she's addressing um, her daughter, Frida, um, using second person, um, whilst pregnant. And here's a picture of Sylvia Plath with her two children. She's a very well-known American poet and was married to Ted Hughes, but unfortunately he left her um, when the children were still young. And because she suffered from depression and perhaps also because um, of this failed relationship, she tragically committed suicide. She wrote prolifically and well, and many of her poems are still studied today. She manages to poignantly express her struggle with depression and with her experiences as a woman, issues that are... Um, relevant for, for many of us still today. She wrote this poem when she was pregnant with Frida, as I said, and um, through a juxtaposition of imagery and metaphor and simile, she explores her experience of being pregnant. So I'm going to start by reading the poem. Clown-like, happiest on your hands, feet to the stars and moon sculled, gilled like a fish, a common sense thumbs down on the dodo's mode, Wrapped up in yourself like a spool, trawling your dark as owls do. Mute as a turnip from the 4th of July to All Fool's Day. Oh, high riser, my little loaf. Vague as fog and looked for like mail. Farther off than Australia, bent-backed Atlas, our travelled prawn. Snug as a bug and at home like a sprat in a pickle jug. A creel of eels or ripples, jumpy as a Mexican bean. Write like a well-done sum, a clean slate, with your own face on. So I'm going to break the poem down um, line by line. And starting then with the first line, she begins with clown-like, happiest on your hands. And so we have this lovely, um, innocent image of a clown and possibly also the stance of um, her baby in the womb. Um, so we know that clowns are usually associated with good things, with happiness and fun. And um, we also know that the, the stance a baby takes in the womb might also be considered clown-like with their hands out, perhaps pushing outwards. And this, is, this happiness is emphasised um, through the H alliteration, happiest on your hands. In the second line, feet to the stars and moon sculled, we have this lovely um, idea of uh, this lovely picture of what the baby would, would look like um, in the womb with the head pointing downwards and um, her feet upwards towards the stars linking it to the uh, to an idea of the cosmos and and so stars and then the roundness of the head being linked to the moon so the imagery is very straightforward um, and quite beautiful gild like a fish a common sense thumbs down on the dodo's mode. Um, so we know that uh, the dodo is extinct. And so this is a, um, a failed um, species, if you like, a thumbs down on the dodo's mode. And then the reference to guild um, like a fish um, is referring to um, the, the gill like structures that fe uh, fetus has in the womb. Um, so she uses both simile and metaphor throughout. In the womb, we have these gill-like structures, as I said, and the thumbs down, the opposite of the opposable thumb that differentiates us from other animals because the new life in her has potential in life, unlike the unfortunate extinct dodo. And then you probably also notice the internal rhyme, the assonance of dodo's mode. And also the break, actually, in that line. So gild like a fish, stop, a common sense thumbs down on the dodo's mode um, enjambment. So we have a full stop in the middle and then um, some enjambment uh, linking the sentences, the lines together. In the next lines, we have wrapped up in yourself like a spool, trawling your dark as owls do. So um, a spool might look like the, the film spool um, that she would have been probably familiar with, um, which is probably quite foreign to the contemporary reader of the poem, perhaps um, a cotton spool might be a better um, comparison. And, and so that for me is a picture of what the baby uh, might, might look, like, look like wrapped up in the womb, like a spool is wrapped up. Um, and then trawling your dark as owls do. I think this is quite a clever image um, because owls are often associated with wisdom. 
So you've got this trawling owl, this owl out um, trawling, um, and a boat might trawl the deeps for fish, or, or one might trawl through information carefully for wisdom or knowledge. So the owl and trawling are linked to, to the search for wisdom or meaning in life as the new life develops in the dark womb. Um, and we've got this plosive de alliteration, dark and do, these hard sounds to emphasize that. Um, okay, mute as a turnip from the 4th of July to All Fool's Day. And this line took me, I'm ashamed to say, a little while to work out. But essentially, if you count the months from July to All Fool's Day, you'll have the gestation period, the, the time, the nine month um, period that a child uh, develops in the womb. And the turnip simile is quite sweet. It's amusing. It reminds one of how firmly rooted her little root vegetable is in the womb. So I really do like that image. And obviously it's mute because it's unable to speak yet. Um, and then the enjambment links the lines as the semantic structure split across the lines. So I'll just go back to show you what, what I mean. Mute as a turnip from the 4th of July to All Fool's Day. And then we have a break, a comma. Um, and the first stanza ends on, Oh, high riser, my little loaf, which again is just a lovely um, line. It's a lovely metaphor of a baby growing and manifesting as a rising bump, much like a loaf of bread rising in the tin. It's also quite an intimate address. My little loaf uh, is endearing and sweet and suggests a mother's love for unborn child. And the all alliteration emphasizes this. Um, love with little loaf so sweet okay in the next stanza vague as fog and looked for like uh, male um we have this this idea of fog um being the unknown as one wonders what well many things what would the baby might the baby look like is it well um when will it arrive and we we might struggle a bit with watching the post box because I think in contemporary society, most of us only receive our bills in the post and we're certainly not watching for that. Um, but we might watch an email inbox waiting for mail, um, in, if, especially if it's, it's good news that we're waiting for, something exciting. So there's a sense of anticipation, this expectation of something good coming through the mail. Farther off than Australia, um, and so, as you know, Australia is often known as Down Under and a great distance away from the US and, and even from um, South Africa, where I teach. Again, we have a sense of the unknown time, in this case, compared to distance. It all seems a long way off, uh, so the nine months can, can seem to drag. And perhaps the baby is starting to seem like a continent as her bump grows. So again, such clever juxtaposition of ideas uh, in this poem. Bent backed atlas, our travelled prawn. So linking, so moving then from this idea of the the distance and map between Australia, um, U, the US and Australia, we have another concept uh, linked to um to the world, and and that is the Titan Atlas, and the idea of travelling. So um the idea of distance on the on the map is juxtaposed with Atlas, which refers to the Titan carrying a globe. Um, and so that's, ref that's an allusion to mythology. Um, and Atlas carries this huge burden on his shoulders and is often used as a metaphor for a child with lots of responsibility. So the, the child will, will be facing responsibility in life and who knows what that'll look like. There will be burdens. Um, and then she also refers to the, the shape of the fetus, perhaps uh, the idea of a prawn. Um, that, that has traveled and it's traveling um, through this experience in the womb. Snug as a bud and at home like a sprat in a pickle jar. Um, so this refers to the lovely British saying snug as a bug. Um, and then like a sprat in a pickle bar, jar, um, I've found um, a picture of a little sprat fish online and um, some sprat fish pickled in a jar. And you can see that they really are um, squashed in there. So these two ideas are linked. Snug as a bug in a rug, um, that is, it means to be very cozy and cocooned, um, just as the baby um, would be in the womb. So that injects some fun into the line. Um, and then the fish crammed into the pickle jug. The womb is um, the preserving pickle jug and, and there's not a lot of space in there. 
and then a creel of eels or ripples. And so this links to the feeling um, of the, the wiggling, perhaps the moving around, um, the baby wiggling around in the room, uh, womb, beg your pardon. And the sound um, is quite clever again, the assonance or internal rhyme to emphasize the, the um, creel of eels as they, they move around. And then jumpy as a Mexican bean. So this is also um, linked to the movement that um, the movement of the baby in the womb. And I found this BBC video. I'm not going to play all of it. I've just embedded it into the Prezi so you can get an idea of what a Mexican bump, jumping bean looks like. It's actually um, a seed with a with an insect larva in it. And so this jumping um, bean is um, perhaps a bit of a misnomer, really. Um, and you'll see from the way that they move on the screen why she talks about the a jumping Mexican bean. I won't play a lot. I'll just wait for this to start. Each year, 20 million leapers of a more playful kind arrive in the world's toy shops from a tiny part of Mexico. The jumping bean is really the seed of a desert shrub. Only a few show this odd leaping. The seeds, imported as novelty toys, seem to have a mind of their own. There really is a mind behind the jumping. A moth caterpillar lives and feeds inside the seed. Okay, so I'll stop there. Um, you can find that online. The video is called Mexican Jumping Beans Weird Nature and it's a BBC um, short film on YouTube. Okay, and then um, she ends with write like a well done sum, a clean slate with your own face on. And um, in the combination of nature and chance that create the child are so perfect it is compared to a correct sum. It is very gratifying when things add up. And um, things have added up for, for Frida to be created, this, this new life, um, a combination of, of hope and chance and, and nature and everything involved with the, with the miracle of a new life. And um, the clean slate is often a phrase to suggest a new beginning, um, you know, to, to clear away the past. It's no longer important. And this clean slate is where one can then begin again. So the child is a new life or slate. And it might also suggest a new phase for the parents. The rhythm is interesting in the poem. Um, you may have noticed that the punctuation often breaks up lines. You have this here in the middle of a line and there's no regular beat. It's often free verse um, with, with two stanzas, each nine lines long, like the gestation of the child. So quite, quite a clever structure as well. And that's your by Sylvia Plath.